Welcome to Biz Dev Live. I have the amazing, amazing Renee Marino with me today. I'm looking forward to getting into mastering communication. We're going to be talking about how to step into your voice so that you can get the opportunities that you want and build the opportunities that fund and build your dreams. Stay with me. We'll be right back with Renee Marino right after the Biz Dev Live theme. Biz Dev Live, Biz Dev Live, weekdays at 11 Eastern Time, live. Biz Dev Live, Biz Dev Live, weekdays at 11 Eastern Time. Leadership and motivation, motivation, empathy and inspiration, inspiration. Biz Dev Live, Biz Dev Live, business development, not even selling it. Biz D with C, brought to you by Cameron T, Cameron T, Biz D with C. Brought to you by Cameron T. Cameron T. This is business development, not even selling it. Not even selling it, not even selling this it. This is business development, not even selling it. Business development, not even selling it. Biz Dev Live. Biz Dev Live. Biz Dev Live. This is business development, not even selling it. Cameron, I am so happy to be here, but I believe that you were muted that whole time. And I see Evan in the comments also said no sound. But hi, everybody. Listen, this is the importance of communication, right? You have to be able to communicate even when things go awry when there are problems with technology that's what happens and as cameron i i think beautifully um introduced me that we all didn't hear what i help many many entrepreneurs with is having that confidence to communicate just like this behind a screen on camera and to still feel like they can be their authentic and genuine selves so i'm ha so happy to be here this is how we go with the flow and um, before becoming, so I am a professional communication coach and I help people who want more confidence and success, learn to communicate effectively, to live the life of their dreams. For over 17 years though, my previous career was as a professional actress on Broadway, in film and TV. And I can be seen playing the role of Mary Delgado in Clint Eastwood's Jersey Boys movie. Um, and the truth is that from the time I was five years old, communication was always something that I was obsessed with. I grew up in an Italian American family where we sat around the kitchen table talking, eating, nonetheless communicating. And because of that, because of that, I always was so interested in how people communicate and why they communicate in the way they do. So I hope you guys can hear me. I think you can. Evan, can you hear me? 
I think I think everybody can be heard now. Hopefully, you can hear me. Yes. Yes. Now we can hear you. <laughs> All right. I put a lot of effort into that that bio intro. I'm so sorry that people didn't hear it. Uh, so just just to just recap here, Renee Marino is a professional communications coach named by Yahoo Finance as one of the top ten communications coaches to follow in 2021. She was the co-host of the Tony Robbins and Dean Graciosi's first ever virtual World Summit and has spoken, performed, and been interviewed on thousands of live and virtual stages, including da Dean Graciosi's podcast, The Dean Graciosi Show. Renee Marino's best-selling book, Becoming a Master Communicator has just recently been launched and is endorsed by Brian Adams, Dean Graciosi, Chaz Palminteri, Russell Brunson, Jenna Kusher, Dominique Murphy, and many more. A graduate of Wagner College with a degree in theater speech, Renee helps people want more comp helps people who want more confidence and success to learn to communicate effectively to reach their dreams. She also uses her well-rounded experience of communicating through various mediums to train companies, organizations, and schools and universities in strengthening their communication skills. Renee can be seen as the female lead Mary Delgado in the film Jersey Boys, directed by Clint Eastwood. She's been featured in People.com's Ones to Watch, Variety, and the Huffington Post. As a coach, keynote speaker, and longtime performer, Renee Marino has inspired people worldwide with her energy, relatability, and authentic spirit. Please welcome to the show, Renee Marino. So we'll, we'll go back in the edit and we'll make sure that that comes in first and, and uh, the YouTube will, will live long with that. So Renee, thank you so much for being with me. I'm so happy to be here. Listen, this is what it's about. This is life, my friends. We got to learn how to roll with the punches, you know, and this is just a representation of that. So let's just move on forward. So Evan can hear us now. So we're good. Evan, as long as we got you, we got you. We got everything. So appreciate yes. that. And, and that's truly like the, the masterclass in communication, right? When you are, are faced with that challenge, not getting upset. I see so many people uh, that, you know, we we moved on to Zoom, the mute button, they get flustered. Now the apologies come to start and that sort of shows, you know, you're already taking up time. We don't want to waste time with that. We want to move right into it. So that's that's one key takeaway. I that's thought you it. did that beautifully. Thank you so much for doing that, Renee. So Renee, tell me how, how exactly um, you really, really, I know you got a little bit into it, read the bio a little bit, but what's like one key thing that you're kind of helping people with right now? I am helping people to feel confident in being their authentic selves, their genuine selves, both on camera and off. This is a new world, right? Technology is beautiful. It's a gift. But if we don't learn how to utilize it in a way where we're being conscious and also in a way where we feel as natural communicating through camera that we do in person, then we're going to run into problems because so many businesses, we see it in this, these past two years, so many businesses have gone virtual. We are only getting more advanced with technology. So it's important that we get grounded in who we are. We get really comfortable communicating authentically and honestly because the truth is we have these great little gadgets, these smartphones, and it can be really tempting to only want to communicate through text messages, through email. But I help people to go back to what I call that old school simplicity and still connecting in a really genuine way, whether that's face to face, picking up an actual phone or even writing a handwritten letter. Yeah. And that's, I think, one of the key things that people forget, right? Either they go one way or the other, right? You know, I was just talking to uh, Justin Killian, shout out to Justin Killian this morning. We were talking about because he's in the sales mortgage industry and he's old school. So he's picking up the phone. And so that's great. But are you taking advantage of of social media. And then there's the other side of it. There are people are all into like social media and, and texting, but they can't pick up the phone and make that real, real, real heartfelt, authentic connection with somebody that is part of the whole social media uh, engagement piece, right? Because if I'm not passionate, if I don't think you're a real person, am I truly connected with you? Um, it's yeah. great if you already have millions of followers, but if you don't, how do you actually build that following, right? How do you actually build that authentic connection with people? And then even those people that have millions of followers, the way they keep uh, engagement and keep raising those numbers is creating that authentic engagement. So talk to me a little bit about your story because you've had some success uh, you wanted to be an actress uh, from, from a little girl, right? Yep. And so you've you've had a journey with that. Talk to us about that journey. Yeah. 
since a little girl, I, I knew I wanted to perform on Broadway. And, and truth be told, everyone, my parents, my family knew nothing about the business of entertainment. My father worked in a factory. My mother worked in a nursing home. So it was a big dream for a little gal from New Jersey. And honestly, most of my family and friends were like, Renee, I mean, that's great. You have this dream, but that's like wanting to be a quarterback in the NFL. And I was like, I know. And through years of perseverance, training, hearing thousands. And I repeat all my entrepreneur friends out there, I'm talking thousands of no's. Renee, you're not this enough. Renee, you're not that enough. I had to develop such a thick skin and really be what I call rejection proof. Mm. Because in order to make it in that business of performing of Broadway, you really have to be so strong in who you are and understand that the rejection isn't a personal rejection on you. So after years and years of just working my butt off truly through hard work from the ground up, I, I made it to Broadway and I've been blessed to be a part of five different Broadway shows. And in 2013, uh, a really amazing, crazy occurrence happened. I was performing in Jersey Boys on Broadway. If you guys know Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons, and I played Mary Delgado, Frankie Valley's wife. And we heard this rumor that they were going to be doing a film of Jersey Boys. And truth be told, I did not think twice about it. I said, they're going to hire A-list celebrities out of Los Angeles. Marissa Tomei is going to play my role. So I went about my eight shows a week. And one day when I went out on stage, sitting 10 rows back was the legend himself, Clint Eastwood. And I was like, oh, hey. There you go. There you go. He was going to be directing the film. So after that happened, we met him afterwards. It was a great show. They started calling people in from our cast to audition. And they put out a breakdown for the role of Mary Delgado, which means just a description of the type of person they were seeking. Jersey girl, sassy Jersey girl, feisty, sarcastic, funny, first wife of Frankie Valley. It was it was basically a description of me and I was already playing the role. So at that point I was thinking, okay, well, this would be cool to be a part of a film. We all have those moments in our lives, right? Where an opportunity comes up in our lives and we're like, oh, that would be really interesting. But like, can I do this? Do I, do I actually try to take advantage of this? So I called up my agent. I said, listen, I'd love to see if we can get me an appointment to audition. She said, I'm on it. Weeks go by, every girl I know on Broadway is getting an audition but me. And my agent calls me and says, Renee, I don't know what the problem is. They won't give you an appointment for Mary Delgado, but they'll give you an appointment for one of the smaller roles. One of the girls who sings my boyfriend's back. Cameron, I hang up the phone and I'm going to be very honest, everyone. Step one of being a master communicator, communicating with yourself, feeling your feelings when they need to be felt. And at that moment, I needed to feel my feelings. I sat on the couch, I'm crying, and I'm literally talking to God out loud. And I'm like, all right, God, what are you telling me? I'm playing the role at the highest levels I could be playing it, and I'm still not getting a chance to audition. I was like, am I not meant to be in this career? And after about 20 minutes, I said, you know what? I'm still going to go in and audition for one of the angels who sings my boyfriend's back. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I go to the audition that day. I'm in the room with the casting director and we're having a great conversation. And then he says, okay, Renee, would you like to sing the song first or read the scene? And at that moment, I'm not kidding. When I, I, I heard this quiet little voice within say, Renee, you have to do this. It feels too right. And I looked at the casting director and I said, you know, Jeff, I was really hoping to come in and read for the role of Mary Delgado. And he looks at me and he's like, I was just thinking the same thing. And Ooh. I auditioned that day, Cameron. This is what's crazy. I did the, I sang the song for the angels. And then I took some time in the hallway, came back, did the Mary Delgado audition. And I left there that day feeling so happy. I was like floating down the street. And here's why. The fact that I had the confidence to open up and speak up in the room that day gave me an opportunity. All I ever wanted was a chance, right? Just the mm. chance to know I auditioned. It's like when there's a promotion at work and you're like, gosh, mm. 
darn it, I know I'm right for this. Like, I don't think my boss is considering me, but I know I'm right for this. And all you want is to have the chance. Well, because I spoke up and I communicated honestly and clearly, I gave myself that chance. And two weeks later, I got a call from my agent saying, you're Mary Delgado in the movie, Clint Eastwood loves you. And I was like, Whoa! And for me, you have to understand, I had never stepped foot on a film set, a TV set, nothing. It was like jumping off of a cliff. But what I teach in my coaching now is imperfect action, taking action in spite of the fear when you don't know what's next. And that's what I did. And I'm just going to fast forward real quick because I want to get to the meat of this story. I get there that first day. It's like, the most incredible experience. Clint Eastwood walks up to me. He's like, you know, I went around to all the different casts, but nobody was in your class. And then you came in and put yourself on tape and it was the icing on the cake. And I'm like, oh my God, this is Clint Eastwood, <laughs> right? So every day that I would film, I was like a sponge. And I think this is a great lesson for everyone listening. When you can constantly look at yourself as a student, no matter how far you are in your business, how much money you're making each year, but you are always open and willing and wanting to learn who you are ahead of the game. And every day on that set, for me, it wasn't just like, I mean, it, I was the lead female in this major Warner Brothers picture. Like it was insane, right? Like, but for me, it was behind the scenes when the cameras were off and I got to talk to Clint Eastwood and ask him a million questions. Clint, what was this like? Clint, why did you start acting? Mm. And it, I absorbed everything. And a month into the project, I'm eating lunch with Clint, the executive producer and myself, when they say, you know, Renee, uh, Clint knew that he wanted you when he saw you perform on Broadway. And I put my fork down and I said, do you guys want to hear a funny story? Um, I actually didn't have an appointment for Mary Delgado. The only reason I got to read those scenes is because I opened up my big mouth in the room and the two of them look at each other, and, uh, each other. And they were like, wait, what do you mean? We requested you. We requested the girl from the Broadway show come into audition and come to find out. And everyone, I hope you're listening. Well, there was a middle person casting associate who was very busy juggling a few films at once and just dropped the ball on having wow. me come in to read for this role. And I love this story so much because if you really think about it, if I let fear hold me back that day and I didn't speak up and I didn't communicate honestly and effectively, I could have missed my once in a lifetime opportunity. So I ask you, how many times in your life have you let an opportunity pass you by because you were scared? You didn't want to tell that person you loved them. You didn't want to talk to your business partner and tell them the true idea that you mm -hmm. had. This education is so crucial to our businesses, to our lives. And this is what I believe. This is, this is if no other takeaway, please take this away. Everything starts with communication. And when we learn to master this skill, we become limitless. I love it. And we were, we were talking before we went, jumped onto live here. We we're talking about Lolita Walker who was on the show yesterday and that, that ability to have that self conversation. We we're talking about that yesterday. We we're talking about the believing in yourself and pulling your courage. Cause I got to imagine being on that stage and asking for the opportunity that wasn't being offered to you, which come to find out should have been offered to you yes. was, was, I, I, I can't imagine how fast your heart was beating. I can't imagine the the fear that, that was going through you. And it speaks to so many things because for somebody that's in the audience, that's looking to be on a stage, to know that that person that's on the stage has those same fears that you do, right? Those same challenges of belief and self that you do, because you're sitting there like, oh, they're probably going to give it to the Hollywood star. They're not going to consider little old me you're, you're a star, you're on the stage, but it's still, everybody deals with that self doubt thing. And so stepping into yourself and communicating that forward. I love that. So, so, so much. So, so talk to me a little bit about your story. So you're in the film. That's been a big deal. You've been in more films. Um, you've worked with, how was it working with like Tony Robbins and, and getting involved uh, with these oh folks goodness. that are these huge communication uh, uh, gurus? Yeah. 
it's it, it's surreal and it's still surreal when i think that i was on stage with what i who i consider my mentors tony robbins dean graziosi i took a course by these two gentlemen and this was what kicked off my journey to become a communication coach so let me rewind a bit after living in la and doing film and tv i came back to new york and i became a part of the broadway show called pretty woman we all know the, mm. the movie it was yep, a Broadway yep. musical. And during that time, Cameron, I had this idea to write a book. And I've always been a writer. I love writing. But I had this thought that this ne this needs to happen. And it needs to be about communication. I didn't know the specificity around that because communication, as we know, is such a broad topic. But as I was doing this show and chatting with my girlfriends in the dressing room, I said, I, I need to write this book. And I simply sat down and I started writing. And the truth is, I knew nothing about how to write a book, what went into it, the editing process, if I wanted to be traditionally published or self-published, nothing. But I just said to myself, Renee, you know this must be written. And then I found exactly what this book needed to be about when I was out to dinner with a friend of mine. We were catching up. And next to us, it's a family of five, a husband and wife, teenage son, and then two young children. Mm. And I kid you not, everybody, my heart was broken because the entire meal, all five of them had their heads down in a digital device. Mm. No one spoke. There was no laughter, no connection. And here I am with my friend. We're like cackling, right? We're like, remember high school? And we're like... And, and to me, this is what life is about, mm. connection. We are human beings. We are meant to connect. And here's this beautiful family with this opportunity to connect with one another. And they chose to put themselves in the virtual world. And that's when the light bulb went off. And I said, I must shine a light on this problem. Because if I don't, so many of us are unaware that it is a problem. And that's what spawned me to write the book. And the subtitle of my book is, so it's Becoming a Master Communicator. And the subtitle is Balancing a New School Technology with Old School Simplicity. And Cameron, you spoke about this at the beginning of our interview <clears throat> when you said some people are really amazing communicating behind the camera. But when it comes to in person, eh, not so good. And then there are others who are great in person on the phone, but if they have a camera on them and they have to be in a Zoom meeting, they shut off. So this is really a guidebook to help us, to show us that it's not and or or. It's not all or nothing. We need to balance these two worlds if we really want to master our communication. And that's what happened. And after that Broadway show, completed. I knew that I was ready for a new chapter in my life. I didn't know exactly what, again, I knew I wanted it to be around communication. And that's when I saw a course by Tony Robbins and Dean Graziosi. And I said, I'm doing it. Took their course every day. And the crazy part is this was right before the pandemic. I made this decision before the pandemic and then the world shut down. So there I was becoming a coach and then realizing, oh my goodness, I really need to help people with how to get on camera because all of a sudden the world is virtual and so many of us don't know how to do it. During that time, I completed the six weeks I, I worked on this course and then Tony, first Dean and then Tony had challenges. You know, we all, we've all been seeing these challenges, free challenges for a week and Dean's was called the start over challenge. And every day he would go live, teach. And then our homework was to go live on Facebook and speak about whatever the topic was for that day. And the first day, Cameron, I go live. And I want you all to hear this and understand this well, because when I went live, I wasn't perfect. I was actually quite imperfect. My hair was a mess. I was like at the gym earlier. I'm like walking around with the phone. I have the video. And it's hilarious, but I was just fired up. I was like, Dean just spoke. And I, I start talking about the topic of that day. And that night, I get a slew of messages from people all over the world who were a part of this challenge. And they were like, oh my God, how did you do that? You were so great. I feel like I knew you. You were so natural. And I was thinking, what are they talking about? Like, 
I just went live. And then I realized because every day this would happen for seven days. And that's when I realized, oh my goodness, this is what I need to help people with at this point in time. And the last day of the challenge, Dean's team reached out to me to ask if he could interview me live in front of a hundred thousand people. And he interviewed me. I told him my story about Jersey boys and how speaking up got me this role. And at the end of it, he said, Renee, I'd love to interview you on my podcast. And that's how I got on his podcast. A month later, Tony did a challenge. This time, 300,000 people. Same yes. idea. Yep. Same idea. I went live every day. Again, people messaging me. Oh, my gosh. Can you teach me how to do this? At the end of the challenge, seven days, KK, his amazing national speaker, goes live. And she says, okay, and we want to call out one person who showed up every day, delivered so much value, brought energy, sang her incantations. You know, Tony Robbins has those incantations every day and yeah. every way. I'm getting stronger and stronger. I would sing them. So everybody like would start singing them with me. And she said, Renee, you won five days to Tony Robbins private resort in Fiji. You showed up consistently throughout this challenge. And it was like amazing. So then months later, Dean's team again reaches out to me and said, uh, Dean would love for you to co-host their uh, him and Tony's world summit. So I flew out to West Palm Beach and I co-hosted this amazing virtual event surrounded by 9,000 Zoom screens where KK and I hosted together, met, introduced Tony Robbins, Dean Graziosi, Trent Shelton, Russell, um, I'm sorry, yes, Russell Brunson, Pete Vargas, Pat Quinn, Brendan Bouchard, uh, Jamie Kern Lima. It was like unbelievable. And to be on stage, not only on stage with my mentors, but to be learning from them like in real time was yeah. next level, next level. But it was the testament again. And I want to state this clearly. It was a testament to me showing up imperfectly, yeah. but being able to be myself and communicate from there. The truth is Tony and Dean never met me in person. They saw me on video, but because I was myself imperfectly and I showed up anyway, that's what connected them to me and said, you know what? We want her to be our co-host. Well, and you know, while you're telling your story, so many things are calling out to me. One you're a performer. So you're you're in the communication space, you practice, you've been on stage, so you know what you're doing and I think that speaks to listen, if you're going to if you're going to if you're going to flex a muscle, you know, make sure that you've exercised that muscle, right? And I think there's no way for somebody that isn't an actress, an actor on the stage all the time to, to stretch this muscle, right? Without actually doing it, right? So it just speaks to like you got to start somewhere. You got to yeah. start from where you are and go. And I love the fact that you were talking about just showing up and not being perfect, because I think so many people are worried about being perfect. And when you decide that you're just going to go all in, because then, you know, the other thing is, well, okay, I'm going to do it, but I'm going to, I'm going to do it in a safe way or the safe way that, you know, is for me. Whereas if you just sort of let it all hang out, um, and I, and I want to be careful on how I say that because I think there's an artistry to, to communication and I know you can speak more to this, but what do you recommend, you know, based on going through this challenge, you know, where people they're getting into this, right. Uh, you know, I got this takeaway and I'll, I'll throw this up here cause maybe this is, this is part of it, right. A momentary interruption can shift you to be your most revolutionary self, right? So mm -hmm. You, you're in a moment, right, that you're saying, I need to get started with this thing. I don't have a million followers. I don't have experience doing this. What is the advice here for somebody to show up? And I've seen people show up so many different ways on social media. And the way that always works is that authentic self starting to come out. You see the difference. I was on, again, a call this morning with somebody and their, their social en engagement strategy is they have posts from their company you know, onto their LinkedIn profile and there's not a lot of engagement there. And I'm like, yep, I know why. Because that's not you coming through. People want to connect with a 
person. So what's your advice for people that are trying to flex that muscle and connect with people and show their true authentic self? Lean into the parts of yourself that you often want to hide. This is a beautiful, and I just did a video about this, you guys. After we're done with this interview, go on my Instagram, and I, I posted it after working with a client of mine who <clears throat> was a bit has been in a bit of a rut. And we got to talking about how oftentimes in life we think that the only parts that really matter are the good parts, right? Ugh, why did I have to feel depressed that day? Why was I anxious? I screwed that video up. I messed up that opportunity. And we think that those parts are throwaways when really that's the gold. So in connection with this conversation right now, if you're someone just starting out, you're like, I don't have a story to share. Yes, you do. And I just interviewed, if you guys know Pat Quinn, who is amazing, he helps people to craft their stories. He's worked with everyone, Tony Robbins, Dean Graziosi, the sharks on Shark Tank. He helps people to craft their story. And what he shared with me and again, that's on my Facebook page. Check that out later on for great inspiration. Most of us think we can only share our story if it's like amazing and like so extraordinary. But the ordinary stories are the ones that people connect with. So if you're just starting out and you think I'm just a regular person, nothing cool's happened to me. I've never been in a movie. Great. That's most of the population. So why don't you start with getting on and talking about how freaking stressed out you feel because your kids are driving you crazy and yeah. you feel like you're about to run. You may run out of the house even though it's two degrees because what I want you to understand is that is what people connect with, with what they can relate to. And oftentimes the parts of ourselves we want to hide the most are actually the parts of ourselves that connect with each others the most. So get on a live, challenge yourself, make it a minute. Hey everyone, I just wanted to hop on today and tell you that I just feel really frustrated. You know why? Because I just have been in this house now for over two years and the news drives me crazy. My kids are going crazy. So I just need to vent. So if anyone else needs to vent, comment below and I guarantee you'll probably have a million comments because that's something that people relate to. It's real. It's not you fabricating a story to sound impressive or to sound like you know more than you do. Be you. And I, I want to say this because it's so important. Human beings by nature are imperfect, right? So I teach this. I have a course called Connecting on Camera, and it's literally about helping entrepreneurs, business owners to get on camera and just be able to be themselves. And what I talk about all the time is that for some reason, we all have this perfectionism disease, right? We I have to be perfect. But the truth is, we're not designed to be perfect. There is no perfect. And most of the times, the things that people identify with the most or where they feel like this person's so relatable is when you make a mistake, right? Yeah. We start out this interview. Ka Cameron was muted. And I was like, <laughs> all right, this is cool. This is cool. But guess what? That's real life. We didn't stop the video and say, guys, we have to stop this now. We're going to go back and start all over. We were like, I was like, you know what? I'll introduce myself a little bit. Let's roll with the punches. And probably many of you who watch this afterwards will be like, oh, that was really, that was great. I didn't even really, it was fine. It was muted, but whatever, they picked it up, right? So let go of that perfectionist mindset and just start the best I feel like the most likes I've ever gotten on videos were no joke when I was sitting in my car with a hat on and I just had a thought and I'm, I'm very intuitive because I have great communication with self. I was like, I feel like if I'm dealing with this, others are too. And I was just like, yeah. all right, guys, here's the deal. I'm feeling a little blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, a million views, not a million views. I'm exaggerating. But my point is I have other videos that I planned and I'm like, okay, today we need to talk about this. And they get like two likes. So just start. And Cameron said it beautifully. Start from where you are. Start right now. Do it today. Yeah. Let this let this be your sign of taking imperfect action and getting on a live for a minute today. I love that. And I, and I think the big thing is consistency, right? I see people that they, they take that leap and they jump into their first live or first video first 
social media message, but they don't keep it up. So what's your advice to people? I know you've been through these challenges. Obviously, you're showing up on social media. What is your advice to somebody to say, listen, you're going to start this and you're going to keep going because you're you, you want to get, you know, to to this place. What's your advice to folks to to build that consistency into their routine? Consistency is key, right? It's it's key. The first step is is I'm reiterating again. First of all, stop trying to be perfect. Yeah. If you stop trying to be perfect, the videos come so much easier because you'll get moments. Think about how many moments of inspiration you get in the shower, right? Ram raising my hand. For some reason, I'm in the shower and I'm like, I'm a genius. There's like a million ideas that come to me. Now, when we have those ideas, put them down, write and write them down. This is something else I teach in the book. This is part of old school simplicity, writing it. Don't jot it in your phone. I know it's tempting, but the phone is home to so many other things, you guys, that distract us. So get out a pen and a piece of paper and jot down these ideas. You can transfer them to a Google Doc later. That's fine. But get it on paper while you're in the moment and start documenting all these ideas and then plan. The only way to create that consistency is to have the planning done before, because then what you could do is, if you're having a, a particularly inspiring day, you can jot out four videos that day, have them saved, and then say, this is good. I'm done for this week, right? Yeah, there's, so, there's so many ways to show up too. Yep. I mean, whether it's TikTok. I had um, Stacy and her husband, Joaquin, on here, and she's at that Loper lady on TikTok. And I, she's a high school friend in March of 2020. Uh, she had probably a couple thousand people following her on TikTok. She's now at 4.2 million less than two years later. And the reason she just picked up the, the camera, they're telling raunchy jokes. They built this huge following. You know, it's just, that's who they are. Uh, Denise Panza, who's on somebody, a friend on LinkedIn, she's, she's in mortgages, completely different business than, than Stacy, right? She shows up and she's in her PJs talking about, on LinkedIn, uh, talking about, you know, what mortgages, things going on in her life, she's just connecting with people in a real way. There's a lot of different ways to show up. You can be Tony Robbins and, and outsized and, and yeah. grandiose and, and you're talking from a place of success or you can talk um, about your, like you were saying, frustrations. I see like the frustrated moms killing it on TikTok and Instagram. There's so many different ways to show up. And obviously the goals are there, but I see a lot of people, oh, if they're business, I got to do something business. I don't think that's necessarily the way, like there's a different path for everybody. You got to find your comfort zone. You got to find what you enjoy. Going live every day is something that I enjoy. So this is the way that I do it. I don't enjoy the post-production as much, although I'm trying to get into it because I'm trying to create valuable content and I have some goals in mind. And so I'm pushing myself on, on that side of it, you know, to take interviews like these and then cut them down to like just the best elements because everybody wants something fast. That's certainly what I uh, consume, right? I don't, want to consume because my time is limited in the day. So I understand that I listen to short podcasts and, you know, short videos, that sort of thing. And, and so you, you can do that, but if you're building the content like this, right, we're doing this live right now, there's something to work with. If I wasn't doing this, well, I would have a lot less to work with. Right. And so I think that's, that's a big deal in so many different ways uh, to do it. Um, we have this third takeaway, right? Genuine, connections are what build businesses. So talk to us about that. Yes. Oh my goodness. Everyone. If you are still believing that old school thought, right? That business is business. Business is just very, we're serious business. There's life and there's business. What's the common denominator in both your life and your business? You. You, my friends. So everything I just shared is, is directly related to your businesses. Simon Sinek said it so beautifully, and I repeat it all the time because I, I, I just, you can't say it any better. We don't do businesses with companies. We do business with people, right? 
So don't get so focused on all these exterior things and, oh, that didn't work out in this program and I need the highest level technology, this and that. Okay, that's all good. Don't worry about that. At the core level, who are you? Why would someone want to work with you? I'll tell you this, most of the time, if it's between you and another person and you both have the same accolades and you both have the same um, experience and you're both great at what you do, but the potential client that you're wanting to work with connects better with the other guy, they're going to go with the other guy. Yeah. Because at the core level, consciously or, or unconsciously, we like to work with the people that we connect with. And we maybe see commonality with, and I'm not going to sit here and say that's always the case. No, there's, there's no hundred percent in anything, but for the most part, people want to work with someone that they connect with, that they get a feel for. Think about if you're anything like myself, you go to a doctor and a doctor's great, but they have no bedside manner. And they're like, how can I help you today? Yeah. Well, you better watch out or you may die. And you're like, oh my God. For me, I'm like, I want you to come in and say, all right, Renee, what's going on? What What's what's bothering you? I want you to make me feel good, right? Maybe ask me how- And take, and take some time with me, right? Give yes. me some customer care, like ask yes. some questions because it took a long time for me to get this appointment. And then who knows what I got to do to get back in the room yes. with you if I need some help. Yes. So give me some, give me some customer service in this moment, right? Yes, and it's so interesting. I love, one of my favorite things to do, Cameron, is- coaching companies on this particular topic, creating those genuine connections. And I coached a, a big, big company two weeks ago. And it was so enlightening for me because as you can see, I'm high energy. Like I'm like, all right, we got to get in communication with ourselves. And I'm a big uh, proponent of moving the body in order to communicate effectively. You got to move that energy, especially when we're operating virtually. So it was so great to see this company, which they're not used to someone like myself and like all they were getting on their feet and hearing this, I could, I could see like the light bulb go off in their brains where they're like, Oh my gosh, you're right. Like I've been, I've been worrying too much about the technicalities of things. And I have not been paying attention to my clients and actually who they are and what they want. Think about it like this. Dean Graziosi talks about this a lot. So I'm going to, I'm going to, give credit where credit's due. He talks about when you go into a car dealership, right? And just say, um, Tom walks up to you and he's like, hey, Cameron. So I have to tell you about our brand new Corvette. This baby is fast. It moves it. Oh my goodness. It's the most beautiful color. I have to show you right now. And you walk in and you're like, whoa, I, I don't need a Corvette. Like I, A, I can't afford a Corvette and I'm trying to get a new minivan for my yeah. five kids, right? <laughs> And then here comes another um, person who works at the car dealership and it's Joe and Joe walks in. And he's like, Hey, how are you? Welcome. Happy Wednesday. What's your name? Hi, Cameron. I'm, I'm Joe. So what's going on? What can I do for you? And he listens everyone. Most important section and area of communicating, listening to hear and not to respond. You could tell he's really listening to you. And you start to tell your story of, you know, I have to be honest, I have five kids. My car is, we've outgrown it. So I'm just looking for something that's really safe, really, really uh, strong. And I don't have to put too much money down. And then Joe goes, oh my goodness, did you say you have five kids? I have five kids. Yeah. And it's funny to hear that because most people who walk in here do not have five kids. Boom, a commonality, a connection's made. Now Joe walks you around and says, how about this? Why don't I show you what we have? We have some new models. And then you tell me what stands out. We'll take it for a test drive and we'll go from there. Are you going to tell me that you're not going to work with Joe instead of the first man, Tom? Of course you are, right? Because you felt heard and there was a connection made through listening and a commonality. So yes, genuine connections are what builds businesses. I love that. You know, it's it's interesting when you're doing like one-to-ones with business professionals and they're selling whatever, you know, service X, service Y, whatever. And they don't take the time to understand who you are, who you know, 
all the the different facets of your life. I love connecting with people and really getting a sense of, you know, we when we got on, I think one of the first questions you had where you, you know, I'm in Valhalla, New York, you're in Jersey, right? So we, we immediately have that like local kind of connection going. East Coast, just, yeah. You know, immediately build something that just wouldn't be there if we didn't talk about it. And I think that that's so key for business. I talk about it with my staffing company. I was listening to you say, you know, asking for the name in that customer interaction. How many customer interactions where, you know, you're dealing with a service provider over the phone and they don't even ask your name? Maybe they ask your name, you know, to pull up your account or something like that. But it's not like they're like wanting to understand who you are and how to connect with you. And it's such a big difference when somebody says, what's your name? Oh, great to talk to you today. What's, what's the problem? What's the issue? How I, I really want to serve you. I really want to get down to the bottom of your issue today. How can I help you? When you're able to communicate that and think about how many businesses that's applicable to, right? To state that expectation, to state that, that intention that I want to help you. I want to solve your issue, solve your problem. If you say that, I think you're doing better than 99% of the business people and customer service people that are out there, right? Just by stating that simple intention. Yeah. And you know, Cameron, it's, it's so funny because again, going back to when I, when I coach companies, it's, I, I feel like it's an old way of doing business where we're taught to check the boxes of what I need to share with you to tell you about what I do. Well, I'm Renee Marino and I do this and I do, and this is what I do. And, and, and we want to impress and we want to make it about I and me. Yeah. And we forget that it's about you and we, and how can I serve you? And when we take the focus off of ourselves and not thinking that's where the nerves come in too, thinking that we have to get everything out. Okay. So this person's coming in to buy a car day. I have to tell them about the new Corvette. I have to tell them about the new models. I have to tell them, right? You're checking off the boxes. And when we do that, we hold ourselves back. We block ourselves from fully hearing. And this is a big common problem in our society right now. We're all seeing it, the divisiveness, the why everybody's so divided because no one's really listening to one another. Everyone's just talking over one another and they want to say what they have to share, what their opinions are, what they believe. And if we could all learn to step back a bit, Miss Lolita E. Walker talks about, I'm sure she said it yesterday, the power of the pause, right? Step back and actually listen to hear and not to get our word in and to respond, business becomes better because the relationships become better. And then it's like building that strong foundation, right? And it doesn't become checking a box off. It becomes actually creating this relationship that whether or not you end up doing business together, that might not be a good fit, but let me tell you, that person's definitely going to talk about you to someone else who's looking for your services. Oh, you're muted. Thank you. I think that's the biggest thing, right? The, the idea that even, even competition, you know, if you get out of that mindset of it's me versus them, right? We all have common goals. And if we understand that, then everybody is a collaborator. Nobody's a competitor, yes, right? Yes. And that's a big, big deal because when you get into that comparison game, it, it's so limiting. So, so limiting. limiting. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we're, we're moving towards the end here and I want to make sure that uh, folks know how to find you. They know how to connect with you. They know how to take advantage of things. I want to see if I can share also. Um, can you hold up your book and do me back? Yes. I think that'll, that'll be, be great. Here it is, my right. friends. Woo! So I want, I want folks to pick up this book, Becoming a Master Communicator, because I, I think that communication to me, when, when I talk about communication and it's, it's tough, right? Because if you're not in that mindset and you don't understand communication encapsulates so much, it's like saying media today, like what, are, what the, you know, what are you talking yeah. about? It, yeah. it encompasses quite a lot, but the idea here that 
communication is really one of those keys to the universe. Whatever you're looking for, whatever you want, communication is the way to do it. So improving that self-improvement piece of it, getting in touch with yourself, having that communication with yourself, getting <laughs> first that communication with yourself, as you talked about today, is such a big, big, big deal. And then secondly, how do you then take, once you get clear on what you want to communicate, how you want to present yourself, which we talked about, don't take yourself so seriously, right? In the sense that there's one given way, oh, I got to communicate the way that Renee communicates. I got to communicate the way that Cameron communicates. I got to communicate the way that Tony communicates. It won't work for you. The nope. way that you communicate your authentic self, that's what's going to work for you. And you may need to find your voice, right? And there's only one way that I know of, and may, maybe Renee knows another way, but there's only one way that I know about finding your voice and that's that's using it, right? It's, it's showing up, being consistent and really utilizing your voice to get your message across. And there's so many different ways to do it. What are what are the ways that you're sort of suggesting, because I want to leave people with some value and, and we'll, we'll leave off with you uh, letting people know um, where to find you and everything, but what are the places that you're suggesting? I know it's nuanced, right? It may be a little bit different for, for different people that you're coaching, but what are you telling people about where to show up and why? It's really not even about where to show up. It's about showing up. So for you, if you're more comfortable on Facebook and maybe you have a group on Facebook that you're a part of, show up there, challenge yourself to do 30 seconds or this is a great little technique, everyone. Use your camera phone. We have this amazing technology in our hands, right? Instead of letting it distract us, let it serve us. Put the camera on. Talk to yourself. How about that for practice? And guess what? Then you can watch it back, which I'm telling you all, it's the hardest thing to do. No one gets it more than me. I used to run out of the room when my mom showed dance recitals. So no one understands more than me. It's so tough. But the more you do it, the easier it gets. And what you get to see is how you are in your natural habitat. So when you just press record on the camera while you're by yourself, folding laundry, doing the dishes, just talk. Today was a great day. Oh, I watched this interview with Renee Cameron. It was really great. Blah, blah. Just talking, right? Being yourself. When you watch it back later, what a beautiful gift. Because now you're able to see how you really are when the pressure's off. And that's what we want. We always want you in your most authentic, genuine mm -hmm. state. So for example... I am someone who naturally talks with my hands. It's That's who I am. If I try to not, it's like almost uncomfortable, right? So if I was someone who wasn't aware of that, and I had this idea in my head that in order to be professional, I have to talk without my hands, what would happen, everybody? I would be sitting there and probably on this interview today, you would all be like, who the heck did Cameron bring on? Because I'd be like, hi, everybody. My name is Renee Marino. I'm a communication coach. And it would be so awkward because I'd be like, don't move your hands, Renee, don't move your hands. Right. But using this technique of watching yourself on video, you may clue into the fact that, oh, I do talk with my hands naturally. So if I talk with my hands, that's okay. In fact, you should do it because that's who you are. And by doing that, it takes the pressure off. It gets you in the practice of getting on video. And the best part, my friends, you can delete it after. So start there. For those of you who are like, I do not want anybody to see me yet. Okay, start there. Love it, love it, love it. I want to thank uh, our viewers today, Coach Glow, uh, Eva Johnson, for, for showing up in the comments. If you have questions around communication, please reach out. I think one of the, the best uh, strategies with social media and communication is engaging in the comments. A great way to show up before uh, you want to create your own posts is just getting involved with other people's posts. So show up. Great way to engage and connect with people. Thank you so much for my audience for showing up. Thanks so much for Renee's audience for checking this out. Uh, this is something that uh, I am super passionate about. I'm always 
eager to help people with communication. I have a lot of fun with it. Obviously, Renee is is in that field too and really is passionate about giving help. So reach out to her and get that help you need with communication because it really is one of those things that really will elevate uh, you and your brand. Uh, I was thinking about um, uh, Brady, right? Tom Brady uh, retiring and just the idea that he could, because of his personal brand, and I know that not everybody is Tom Brady, and right, and so I don't want you in this con- this 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 comparison game, but just the idea of how strong and how much it's worth building your personal brand, because he's made a lot of millions of dollars with the sponsorships and and the money that he's made from the NFL and everything, but he could you know zero the bank accounts today and just off of the personal brand and the following that he has, right? And his communication skills, because he's a good communicator, he can go out and earn without a problem tomorrow because he's got the personal brand and the following. So that is the reason to build your personal brand, build your following, because it is that key to building those opportunities. It may not be money today, but it'll definitely be money tomorrow as you build that up. So a uh, great reason to pick up Renee's book, Becoming a Master Communicator, get a coach, get somebody to help you, right? Um, tell people where uh, they can find you and connect with you, Renee. And I just want to give a shout out to Alexandria Rosa checking in, uh, tuning Hello. in from Ohio. Thank you for tuning in. Go ahead, Renee. Yes. Make sure, my friends, to pick up a copy of this book. It truly was written for you. It's a guidebook. Each section has a reflection section for you to answer questions, really allow the information to absorb. And here's what's cool. When you purchase um, a copy, and you can do that on my link, becomingamastercommunicator.com. But you can also get it on Amazon, um, but it's great to do it through my link because then you get to really understand all the endorsements I have, Brian Adams, Clint Eastwood, Dean Graziosi, all of these amazing individuals. Um, You get to read about the book. So it's great to order it through that link, becomingamastercommunicator.com. But when you order a hard copy, it's soft cover, but hard copy, you get a free ebook to gift someone which is such a beautiful gift. We all need help with communication. So it really is a wonderful resource. So grab that and reach out to me on Instagram at I am Renee Marino or here on LinkedIn. I love, love, love connecting with viewers who have watched this interview. If you have a question, reach out. And I'm just so happy always to talk about this topic because I will say it again, everything starts with communication. And when we learn to master this skill, we become limitless. I'm also my friends on Clubhouse. um, And it's just, if we can learn to make this a priority in our lives and businesses, just say hello to that vision board life that you want. Love it, love it. And Alexandria, build relationships in the comments here. And what else, what else we got here? What is she saying? Uh, Oh, that's great. All right. So beautiful. All right. So thank you so much, Renee, for doing this with me. I'm so excited that we got to connect because I'm passionate about communication as well. So I know we'll get to collaborate on some stuff in the future. Um, This is something that I think, you know, when you talk about mastery, communication is, is a life skill. It's not like you go to the gym one day and you walk out with muscles for the rest of life. It's something that you constantly are improving on, something that you're constantly building that muscle on. So I'm so glad that people are, are building that muscle with us today. Reach out to Renee, connect with her on Clubhouse, on LinkedIn, on Insta. What's your Insta handle? Uh, Insta, Renee? Yep. It's at, it's at I am Renee Marino and uh, Facebook at Coach Renee Marino. Yes. Say hello to that vision board life, Alexandria. Yes. (laughs) All right. Thank you so much, Renee. I'm going to let you have the last word and say goodbye to everybody. And I'll play us off with the Biz Dev Live theme. Thank you, everyone, so much for being here. And I communication lights me up so much because I know in my spirit, in my soul, that when we invest in ourselves and invest in learning how to authentically communicate, the world of opportunity opens up. Thank you all so much. And thank you, Cameron, for having me on your show. Thank you, Renee. Biz Dev Live. Biz Dev Live. 
weekdays at 11 Eastern Time. Live. Biz Dev Live. Biz Dev Live. Weekdays at 11 Eastern Time. Leadership and motivation. Motivation. Empathy and inspiration. Inspiration. Biz Dev Live. Biz Dev Live. Business development, not even selling it. Biz D with C. Brought to you by Cameron T. Cameron T. Biz D with C. Brought to you by Cameron T. Cameron.